Good morning traders and welcome to this week's weekly market analysis class that is pre-recorded due to unforeseen circumstances. I cannot do the class live but I am making the time to record this for you. Uh, before we get started, as always, please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Okay, what I'll do is uh, I'm going to include the chart of the day from the daily call today, which again I'm kind of incorporating two into one. Uh, the chart of the day uh, for this morning is the Canadian Japanese Yen. Now it's uh, on a daily chart. Now please understand it's not ready yet. We need to wait for the current candle to complete. If it completes as an inside candle then we have a, a full trigger available to us. We can clearly see from the region that I've marked out for us that uh, we have hit some kind of uh, a resistance level and uh, we're just waiting for confirmation to see if we get the correct setup um, to trade price action back down the hill so to speak. So this one is our chart of the day from the daily call. Put this one into your hot list and uh, let's see if we have a trigger for tomorrow. Alright so let us uh, kick off and have a look at uh, the news, the major news that we have uh, this week. I'll just add a little bit of commentary from last week. Of course we had non-farm payroll on Friday which was the, the biggest event of the week. Uh, the reports in general were mixed Okay, so there was some good news and some bad news, uh, well not so much so bad news, but generally it was a mixed report. Uh, it was, however, interpreted by investors enough to keep the confidence in the US dollar, and so the US dollar uh, came out a little bit better from that report. Now, of course, uh, leading into this week, we're going to hear from Miss Yellen, and I'll speak about that in a moment, uh, which will clear out a few things and let's see how what the direction that the US dollar essentially takes. So I guess from non-farm payroll mixed news but generally investors are staying faithful and uh, the US dollar did not tank and has performed okay from it. GBP last week we ran into a bit of head uh, sort of resistance at that 130 to 130.50 level and uh, it's pulled back a little bit so we need to see what becomes of that. The euro in general had a, a stronger week. Now our chart, our technicals predicted that. Uh, unfortunately we weren't able to pull a trade in there as the setups didn't uh, show themselves and we'll have a look at that when we have a look at our charts in one moment. For this week that's coming up now it is a, a relatively lighter week and essentially pretty much dominated by two currencies which is the Canadian dollar and the US dollar. Um, the highlight of the week is we have the Canadian dollar with a, a monetary policy report and a rate a decision and statement that happens on Thursday midnight my time which is local Australian Eastern Standard Time uh, or Sydney time. So that's the, probably the, the highlight, the, the one of the bigger moving events. We also have Miss Yellen testifying. Uh, she actually does that on Thursday and on Friday. Uh, so what we're looking for here, this is uh, this particular uh, testimony is her six monthly or twice annually uh, statement. And I think what investors are, are really looking for here is to see if she remains with the, her hawkish nature in, in her outcome of the economy, which will basically reinforce and, and the, the faith in investors in staying with the US dollar. Well, the other key uh, from the US is probably retail sales are the, the, one, the most market moving, which will be on Friday at 10.30 p.m. So there you have it. They're the highlights uh, for the week. Um, as you probably guessed, since we essentially got major news from just two currencies, our currency of the week or the one that's going to be affected the most by data is the US CAD. Okay, so there you have it. That's uh, what's on the agenda. Let me bring my charts forward and we'll go through and I'll analyze the market so we can all have a look where we sit for the week. We'll start off with the, U uh, sorry, the Aussie US dollar. Okay, now I really like uh, this pattern. That top line is held quite nicely. The bottom line is also held quite nicely. And look, in an ideal world, I really want to trade off these levels 
okay now we are kind of in the middle so I it's an area which I'm reluctant to trade within now I was considering um, if we were looking at this section as kind of like trend in in this direction as such we did have a, a little bit of a setup on an inside candle right over there uh, but as it turned out that the, the candle that uh, preceded it broke on the downside which cancelled out the setup and basically left us in no man's land as it stands right now we don't have anything it's going to be very difficult to get a setup in this direction and uh, I wouldn't trade it from that point either way so what I'm gonna do with the Aussie dollar is I will wait for it to meet me either at that level or at this level when I get there then that's when I'm looking for my price action uh, setups and I'll be very much happy to trade uh, such a setup when we get there okay so for this week Aussie US dollar is kind of in no man's land so we are skipping away from this one where we got nothing set up let's move along let's have a look at the euro USD okay euro USD has been on a really really strong run I'm still keeping that gap here because there are some traders out there that still believe that this will get closed up now I have seen gaps that have taken two years to close up uh, seen gaps that have taken you know quite a few months it's already been nearly two months uh, since that gap presented itself in the market and has reluctantly moved away from that now one important thing to note about when a significant gap such as this one is left in the market is that should all of a sudden the market start to drop down it can quickly take uh, a lot of acceleration in the other direction because all those traders that have this memory they will quite happily jump back into the trade and and add to the momentum to accelerate it downwards okay so I'm leaving that highlighted there it doesn't mean that I'm trading short it just means that I'm, I'm leaving it there okay now what I have highlighted and what we were trying to do let me zoom in a little bit better last week was uh, we said let's wait for some kind of a pullback the pullback happened but we didn't get the setup there was no setup for us so this little movement here we weren't we're not able to take advantage of it because we didn't get uh, a price action set up so what I'm going to do this week we're kind of still in the same region I'm just going to add a little line up here okay I'm curious to see if we break that line that level it kind of opens up <coughs> excuse me it opens up uh, the market traveling to the 115 uh, and further on okay now should this level hold now post non-farm payroll on Friday we saw that we got very very close there um, and it shot down so I'm curious to see um, the other level that I just want to highlight for you is I'm just going to put another marker at this level here okay now I think if we break this one okay and more specifically if we get through all of this it really opens up this area for us um, now that's still a long way to go but um, it would not surprise me if we start to dance around about in here for a little while until we go off in one or direction or the other now this particular week there's not much euro data available so it's probably going to be moved a, a lot more by the sentiment on the US dollar okay so at the moment as it stands we don't have a trade what may come uh, as an option if we step into a four-hour chart you may get an opportunity over here somewhere to attempt to trade it as a bit of a um, double top or, or something along those lines okay so that's for, for any of you that really are looking for a trade on the euro USD otherwise really there isn't anything I'll go back to my daily and I'll leave these lines on my chart because they will remind me of what my thought process was the last time that I looked at it okay let's move along let's have a look at the GBP USD okay GBP USD we were hoping that we could we didn't quite 
get the opportunity to trade up there we didn't get a setup that's unfortunate what I've also done now is if I've, I've added this bottom line and I've picked up this top and I've picked up this bottom uh, thinking that maybe a previous uh, level that was acted as resistance is now acting as support and um, I think until the GBP breaks clear of that 130.50 region which is around about up here somewhere okay uh, we may be in this space okay so what I'm willing to do is I'm willing to look for opportunities up here to try and short it again or if it does come down to this level here then I'm looking for opportunities to go in that direction anywhere in between would not be considered trend because you can clearly see that I'm stuck in there so th I would not attempt a trend based trade even though my moving averages are lined up and I often use those moving averages simply to give us a, a simple uh, idea of what trend could be but it's clear from this drawing uh, that I'm showing you here that we are not in trend yet we are in a consolidation phase so the best trades that I would be looking for again are these ones we're not there so unfortunately I've got no setups for you at this stage on the GBP USD let's move along let's have a look at the US Yen okay US Yen now I drew, uh, I think this was a, we had a chart of the day or a daily call last week two times and the third one we said um, we had this little inside candle over here. I got some questions about this, I'll just share these thoughts so that uh, it can help everybody else. Um, the question was if you get a setup because I did make a comment last week as I made this the chart of the day on the daily call and it was also a trading challenge trade I made the comment that it, it is occurring on the eve of non-farm payrolls so often you as a trader will have to make your own decisions as to if you get a setup on such a heavy data or market moving data release do you take the trade or do you not take the trade? Um, the question was asked, what do I do? Look, uh, and this is, I don't want to influence any, anybody and you should all go and make your own decisions. But generally for me, I just trade it. It doesn't really matter to me. If I'm trading it off a daily candle, if I was, you know, doing a trading off a 15 minute chart or even a one hour chart or something like that, well then that's different because uh, it's, uh, all the parameters are, are totally off the mark so then it would affect my decision but when I work off a daily chart I just trade it I often we not just myself we often rely on big data moving events to assist our trade or sometimes they stop us out but that's just part of trading and that's part of the probability and uh, and I'm okay with that okay so hopefully I've answered uh, that question because I, I did get about six or seven emails in relation to that so hopefully if you were one of them you're listening and you can formulate the best uh, answer for yourself all right now I often talk about the breaking candle this is a breaking candle look ideally it's not really the best I was this week is just a little bit too long if it was a little bit shorter and I wasn't coming so close to this level here then yes I would have uh, been happy to take this you know trade in this direction straight away now I have talked about breakout trading before it is a difficult uh, type of trade to do psychologically okay so just be aware of that if you're finding it too uncomfortable uh, the reasons behind that are, are pretty obvious because imagine at this point you want to buy and you've just seen the market do this entire movement it's naturally to think uh, that uh, it may not continue okay so the psychology behind the breakout trade is quite difficult um, so I just thought I'd point that out now what I want to do now is let me get rid of this line because it's no longer in use I just wanted to use that for us to see and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a brand new one it's going to go right across and you pretty much guessed it you know what I'm going to look for I am going to look for 
an entry right here to short or the alternative is if you do like breakout trading and this candle is going quite strong right now if this was to end up like this for example tomorrow well then bang that is a breakout trade um, and it would be clear to to attempt it okay so there you have it that's the analysis on the US yen and uh, let's just see what happens there okay let's move along euro yen Okay, Euro Yen right now is one of these that is on a, it's breaking all highs. Um, when you see the market, see from a long time ago, it's just been moving all the way down. And then there was a clear level here, which we've broken, and this level, and now we've broken. Essentially, this is kind of like, imagine if you're digging through the ground and you hit like an air pocket, like a cave. There's a lot of space in here, so uh, the, and often we get a lot of sort of uh, amateur, or no, I shouldn't say that word, but people who just get hung up on the fact that this has moved so far, it's got to come back now, and they start to try and short in these areas here, and there's not many, um, there's not enough volume for the shorting and basically it just keeps on going because of these big air pockets so to speak so at the moment I want to kind of stay clear of this the only trade that I'm really interested on in the euro yen is is buy trades so the best buy trade that I can think of is we need to wait for it to pull back give us a fractal candle the, let me draw one out because there might be someone new that's watching this that doesn't really know what I'm talking about Let's say it comes back and I get a little candle like this and an inside candle. So let's say it comes back and then it produces this kind of candle pattern. Then at the break of that candle, it's a continuation of trend. Okay, so this one is in trend. Look at this from this point onwards. We're just going up, up. Hopefully it comes back, gives us this pattern that we're looking for and we can continue with the trend all right so it's the only type of trade that I'm interested in on the euro yen okay Kiwi dollar all right Kiwi dollar look uh, we've marked out this potential double top and we have not had a setup if I zoom in you know all these candles in this region here and we have not been able to produce the setup that I'm looking for I'm still very bearish. I'm I'm desperately trying to get in, but I cannot see anything. So uh, I'm just going to sit it out. Okay. So what may happen now? We have had a little pullback. We've had a little pullback. This may attempt to run and try and break through. It may come back up, and may give us the setup that we want, and then we can try it again. Okay. So sometimes we have to be patient. We don't quite have everything that we're looking for. So all we've got to do is essentially wait. Okay. So this one's pretty simple. We are potentially at a double top. It has moved back from that top, which is a, a good signal. Um, I'm not going to try and buy it because there's too much resistance up up there so I need to wait for it to come back and let's see if we can sell into it okay all right US CAD US CAD we've taken out let me just draw a quick line over here so what we thought might have been some support it's broken through and if I zoom out we got to look at the next region that there may be interest we have these areas here so we'll just bring it across and let's see what happens in this area that I've highlighted for us so let me zoom in okay so the options that we have here let me just okay I can attempt to look for trades in this region back up in that direction okay until I get down there and of course, when I say 
Yeah, I everybody knows that I don't just trade off a level. Okay, so when I get down there, I still need confirmation in the way of price action uh, reversal candle patterns. Okay, so until I get down there and I get my confirmation, we will do nothing on this one. All right, if it now starts to shoot up, let's say if it starts to go up a little bit and you get a candle pattern here, you can attempt to continue it down as long as you have enough room to collect your profits remembering that we could run into a bit of a brick wall down here all right so just keep all those factors in mind and then you can make your trading decision depending on where we move on that one all right so there you have it that's the US CAD let me move along gold okay last week or the week before I think I drew this line and this would have been classified as a good breaking candle okay that's a it's a nice big candle the wicks are quite small on it and uh, you can see that it did pull back and uh, let me zoom in a bit better it pulled back and then it's continued so right now we've taken this low out we're below that I'm not really interested in anything here in gold the only possible thing this line now is no good to me so let me get rid of it what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out the next level just so that I'm aware of it let's see if uh, we, we get the possibility of something there or not now that would be aggressive because technically this is not a line until I have at least two confirmed points and right now I've only got one confirmed point if this comes down to the bottom that point is not confirmed until it starts to move away alright so you gotta remember that this would be what I call a very aggressive type trade it's not even really a double bottom because there's something in between alright all I'm doing is I'm marking it out just to guide me around my chart so at the moment the best type of trades on gold would be anything that pulls back get price action and continue to trade it in the downward direction this is the best uh, probability on this particular chart right now all right let's move along finally we have oil now this channel has been a really rewarding one it's produced some nice results for us uh, we are stuck in now we're, we're kind of in the middle of it so I have a rule like say for example now if this if we were to get price action and you could say oh you know we're on our way to this side here I have a rule that I don't trade inside my channel when it's against the angle see the, the gradients the gradient is down okay so but if it's in the direction of the gradient like for example for here if it went up and gave me price action there I would trade that but not in this direction because this is against the slope of the channel all right so and since we're in the middle two options only wait till we come down to the bottom or wait till we go to the top to trade in those directions okay they're the only viable options for oil for this week all right guys that pretty much wraps up uh, my analysis for the week uh, apologies I could not do this class live um, but I have made the time to produce it for you so if you do have any questions you can always email me and I will make the effort and time to get back to you in a promptly manner hope you all have a great trading week uh, hopefully I will be able to do the daily call first thing in the morning as usual um, but uh, I will speak to you shortly. Bye for now.